So, hi everyone. Thank you for inviting me here. My name is Sara Sabatini. I am from Italy, and I'm an I study art history and historical artistic heritage management at the University of Genova. And I'm here today to present to you the European Association for Cultural Heritage that I'm now part of. I'm the responsible of the internal communication. And I knew this association thanks to um, a study period that I spent abroad at the, um, at the University of Girona that was inside of this network. So how a project was inspired by the announcement of the European Year for Cultural Heritage for 2018. And we decided to follow its spirit to celebrate cultural diversity, to point out the necessity of interdisciplinarity approach, and especially to raise the awareness towards the young generation by actively involving them in the cultural heritage debates. So stimulated by this purpose, ISAC was established in 2017 by, uh, thanks to an idea of a um, group of law students of the University of Passau in Germany. And I think that's quite an interesting aspect that a project concerning the cultural heritage has been realized thanks to an idea of a group of students and it's not um, in the humanistic fields of studies. So today we can say that uh, ISAC has become the first uh, interdisciplinary and cross-generational network in the field of culture and heritage at the European University. Since then, the network, as you can see, has widened up to include 15 universities in uh, eight different European countries, to also in uh, Sweden, as you can see. And, but the objective is to increase even more the number of um, inherent and in, of adherent university in order also to empower even more the European dimension of the project. Uh, currently, ISA accounts with the several mm, mainly German uh, supporting institutions and with the several European editorial partners that are pressure for us has an occasion to, um, to share ISAC, ISAC member researchers. For example, with the um, Law Review, Halts and Culture, we had the occasion to publish a report of the results of uh, the Girona meeting that I'm going to talk about in a minute. But yeah, also always according to the um, purpose of diversify ourselves for a strong European dimension, one of our objectives for the future is to acquire supporting institution, at least in each country, in each European country where ISAC is represented, and also to achieve a more European and official level of recognition. So, as I just said, in June we held our first ISAC meeting at the University of Girona, where for the first time ISAC members from all over Europe or from almost all over Europe, had the occasion to meet. And that was the first time that our virtual connection had the chance to become concrete so that we could have the chance to share the research lines in a different field of study and also have an intense brainstorming session where we discussed about the main line of our common vision. Because this vision, this idea was actually an idea um, Build just uh, from the student by the students uh, of Passau. And in that occasion, we wanted to give our vision, our objective, our project uh, a more international and shared aspect, according also to what ISAC, to, for what ISAC exists for. And so in that moment, we started to think about what our achievement have, has been so far, what we want to be, and where we want, where we want to go. So at the Girona meeting, seven ISAC University were presented. As you can see, Girona, of course, Madrid, Hamburg, Munster, Opole, and Passau. And uh, so that the European dimension, as well as their interdisciplinary one, has arisen almost immediately because every ISAC member uh, brought the different approaches to heritage from the diverse angles of the manifold fields that includes 
um, anthropology, history, art history, heritage management, tourist management, conservation, restoration, and, and law. So that one of the main goals of the disconnection between, uh, uh, between discipline has been almost naturally fulfilled thanks to the various knowledge baggage that each member has shared with the others, also to contribute uh, to extend the perspective of, this, of each discipline in uh, fields of action that may would have never been taken into account. For example, for me, it was important for me to, to meet the law students, uh, to include some, some aspect in my thesis research. Here, I provide you with um, all the title of the presentation that, that has been presented in the, in the presentation session, where it's, it's possible to draw the, um, the, real extent, the real extension of the members' knowledge. And I would like to provide you some interesting examples. The first one is from, was a girl from Bucharest and that opened the um, presentation session with a contribution about what she considered um, a best, one of the best practice in the conservation of intangible heritage. And she based this case study on the, um, on the La Pizzica that it's like um, a music and, uh, and a traditional dance from the southern of Italy. So it was also nice for me, to, as, as Italian, to find someone from Romania who is studying Italian culture. Then there were two students from Hamburg who presented the project Young Heritage Studio, that it's a project realized by uh, students and professors that was focusing on how digital devices within museum, art center, and in general cultural sites could help the access and the comprehension of the museum context for the youngsters. And then other two art history, art history students from Munster, they presented um, a blog that they created where they collect the history of the most hidden monuments in, in Munster that people in their everyday life passed by, but they are unaware about the history there's behind. And in their blog, all the description, all, all the text provide, all, of course, the historical description of the monument, but also like a, a very personal and feelings of about, about living and heritage that you pass every day, but you're actually not aware of. And their project also results in an exhibition they had in July in Munster. So at the end of all the presentation, we find out that all the contribution had revealed that the common idea that the most important reason uh, for the conservation of heritage must be to, um, uh, to raise the community's awareness towards um, yeah, community's awareness to what heritage means for the development of cultural identities. And so at the end of all the presentation, we started to, uh, to, think, to think about our common vision according to what we consider as heritage. We had the, our first occasion to present our project and also the results of our first meeting at the European, at the European Cultural Heritage Summit held in Berlin in June. And so before outlining what we came up with uh, in, uh, in Girona, I would like to clarify some two key concepts that felt so relevant to us when it comes to shape up our vision in Girona. And our two key concepts that were quoted in the catchphrase of the Berlin Summit, that is sharing heritage, sharing values, and the two concepts is, of, in fact, values and to share. For what concerns values we identify with the Convention of Faro of 2005, which states that um, heritage to the heritage enhancement does not have to be does not have to concern just uh, its mm, conservation policies, but its enhancement has also had to do with, uh, consider with its consideration as a resource of collective memory, creativity, 
um, identity and also connection across nation and generation. That means that for basically the Faro Convention has um, represented a meaningful shift from the value that culture assessed as in itself from the value that the community and in general the society can draw from the heritage. So this leads us to the second key concept that is the duty to share those values that are not, um, are not considered as static and just material components. In our case, to share them within ISAC network as we are provided with this instrument. But um, furthermore, we are provided with, with this this virtual platform, we are also have the instrument that is the academical formation. And so we think that we also have the task to transmit the values awareness to all the level of the society. After outlining these two key concepts, we also reflect about the notion of historic artistic heritage. And we identify that the main function of this concept of historic and artistic concern mainly the conservation of its historical substance. And this notion reflects an idea of a cultural value all, mm, mostly uh, resulting from his uh, unobjectified values. And then next step we consider, we prefer to consider the notion of cultural heritage is like a, a wider notion that must be uh, broadly reconsider because we believe that, that this is a value of the f for the 21st century is the communicative and creative and social and social potential of, uh, of heritage for, for contemporary cultural developments and it must be is this kind of value that must be stimulated to achieve the objective of social cohesion that I was discussing before. So consequently, we do not consider heritage uh, um, as, as a mere static historical document, but we thereby, of course, consider uh, investigation of a paramount importance, because of course, we, you can't share a values of a cultural sex that you don't know, that you don't investigate, that you don't study. But it must be rethought in its concrete potential and in, in its contribute that historical artistic heritage or in its wider notion of cultural heritage could really generate into the society. And that's, that's why we, we strongly believe in the necessity of a real cross-generation involvement in the scientific debate. So all this mm, consideration led us to have a clearer idea with, of our two of our three main uh, features that distinguish our association. Interdisciplinarity has to do with the belief that uh, a discipline doesn't have a straight and close path, but there must be interaction and connection between them, also to avoid the um, different approaches to be segregating in the bureaucratic system, like in the case of economical and low, and low studies, or is isolated in, the, um, in academic investigation in the case of humanistic studies. And Isaac is also, as I said, cross-generational because we believe in the interaction between different levels of studies, between bachelor, master, PhD students, and also professors. But, mm, Cross in the cross-generational fe cross -generational feature has also another aspect that it's not just an internal aspect, but it has uh, an external projection because our purposes are projected towards all, towards all the generation to provide everyone to enjoy heritage. And we furthermore believe that passing on the um, Passing on cultural heritage to future generation is also essential to, to foster the responsibility and the awareness of all forms of tangible and uh, intangible heritage. So at last but not least, the European dimension is it's, it's very important because we know that uh, heritage plays an overreading role on the developing for the on the developing of the sense of belonging to the European community. 
and we are also completely aware of that since most of us grew up through uh, school exchanges, Erasmus program all across the Europe. So we are really aware on how culture can play a role uh, as a nexus between different, different backgrounds. So in accordance to the, those characteristics, our statement is to contribute towards the great connection of the concept of culture and heritage for the contemporary developments. And conforming to Isaac Vision, our objective for the future are to, as I said, empower even more the European dimension by extending the network to even more European university and also by obtaining su more supporters in Europe. And another important objective is that even though Isaac was born within the the European Year for Cultural Heritage of 2018, we want to extend the project beyond 2018 because we also believe that one year is not even close to be enough to develop our objective and to really establish a real connection between, between students from all over, all over the Europe. And our intention, in fact, is to at least to organize one meeting a year to be held at the European University and this is because even though we have, we have built a, a virtual network, we know that the real connection and the real exchange can really happen just when this virtual connection becomes concrete, when there's really the possibility to discuss and change uh, between uh, and, and exchange between us. And we will also allow those meetings one day to become conferences, workshop, and visit through city's heritage and we also would like them to be open to a wider audience because as I, as I said according to this cross-generational characteristics and also because we think that is by sharing heritage in the field of education and mediation that it's possible to achieve the real recognition between the communities and their cultural heritage. Here after, after the Girona meeting we have an important occasion to spread our message during the um, European policy debate, always during the European Cultural Heritage Summit in the uh, 22nd of June. And we were asked to spread a message. Uh, just, we were given just three minutes to spread this message. And we consider it a very complex task because we were given the opportunity to spread this message in front of the, in front of the leader of the cultural heritage sector since a lot of uh, Minister of Culture of... In, in, well, since a lot of <laughs> Europe Ministers of Culture were present. So the question was, what we really want Europe to know from our generation, from us as young students and young researchers. And we understood that what we really want to communicate was our desire to be actively involved within heritage debates. And I would like to read you a small fragment from this message, because what we were demanding was to grant Europe youth access to sites, monuments, archives, institutions of ten intangible and material heritage because you cannot demand participation from the young generation if you assign them a passive or just a consumer role. If you want us to take your responsibility in a couple of years, you have to accept that we also have our point of view. So basically, we want to uh, transmit that we are aware that we will be the generation that hopefully we can take over the responsibility and the roles in the in the heritage sectors, and we and to do that, we think that our point of view should be taken into account, and also because, as as I said, as since we grew up through the this school exchange, school Erasmus, we are really aware of how our culture could help to to communicate even though there are some linguistic and cultural barrier. We can also, even though it could be a barrier, we, could, we are aware that it could be seen in a perspective of a, of a real connection, of a real nexus. 
After um, presenting Isaac, I would like to um, talk a, a, little more, a little more about my personal perspective about Isaac. And I should firstly, firstly say that my line of investigation is the mediation of contemporary art through um, a proper educational program within the museum that could help visitors to approach some uh, uh, complex contemporary art expression that yeah, that sometimes are very difficult to approach. And um, according to that, I would like to, to quote a declaration that the head of the, um, of the communica communication department of the Art Museum in Vine said during uh, a TEDx, like just a couple of years ago, if I remember well. And he said that the worst barrier you can build between a museum and, and, and the audience, it's when a visitor asks himself, am I smart enough to understand the, con the contents of the museum? Am I smart enough to understand what is exposed? And so mm, I was quite, quite inspired, quite inspired to, to that speech. And now I'm, I'm currently studying at the University of Girona. I did Erasmus just last year, and I decided to come back because now I'm, I'm investigating for my thesis research. And, and my thesis research is about a mediation project the Antoni Tapias Foundation of Barcelona, where after my graduation, I'm going to do an internship right there. And in order to introduce a little bit, a little bit more my topics, I would like to focus on a definition of heritage as it appears in the Faro Convention that states, Cultural heritage is a group of resources inherited from the past. And of course, this concentration on the past components is of course understandable, since normally just history could say if a cultural production will become part of our heritage and in the end part of our identity. When in contemporary art, instead the absence of this past related component could lead us not to consider uh, what we are producing now as heritage. But at least, of course, I think that it's part of the, cu the culture we are producing now. And that could really contribute to a, a kind of a critical view on the times we are living now, since the reference of the contemporary heart is right the uh, times we are living, we are experiencing, and, uh, that, and we know that, and that we directly know. But unlike the value of the past that reaches us almost naturally and automatically, because history has gave them a role in the definition of what we are now, and this is also the, the main reason for, the, for this conservation, the value of contemporary heart is still in the process of construction and, and, the defi and the definition in the end. That's why I believe that mm, the consideration of contemporary heart for, of our present must pass through its communicative and creative and social potential that I was discussing before, talking about Isaac, Isaac main features, well, or Isaac main inspiring concepts. And mm, here I quoted another, I quoted another declaration, declaration from the um, art historian Ben Street that he when that he said during a workshop of the mediation project of Manifesta Ten that says that not to engage in a conversational way with art is to misunderstand its place art historically, since most of contemporary art is built on dialogue. So this is quite important because all, all of our, all the art of all the time, and it's even more strong when it comes to talk about contemporary art, it must be seen in a perspective of sharing it in a continued dialogue. Because as he said, not to engage contemporary art in this communicative process means also deny its historical meaning. And this could also lead that people, since they don't feel like they have access to contemporary art, they don't feel like it, is, could, it could be part of the heritage of its future. And, the, and in the end, they don't feel like it could be part of their identity. 
So when I presented Isaac at the in June at the European at the Berlin Summit, I expressed the desire that I want to include my university within the Isaac network. And today I am I am happy to say that we are now in the process of developing a project that um, that it concerns the revaluation and the enhancement of a zone of Genova that it's an historical neighborhood, that it's a good example of a, a, an history that is going to be stratified because uh, there's a very heterogeneous um, inhabitants that live here, like Erasmus students and immigrants as well. And it's, um, yeah, it's a neighborhood where people live there and in a, in a in a historical building and then sometimes they're they're not aware of that and i would i would like to integrate my my university as a connect work with the aspiration that our activities could sensitize the necessity of of the mediation of the heritage towards the audience consider as as i said as an active visitors and yeah, in conclusion, I wanted to announce that we are in the process of organizing the second meeting, the second ISA meeting to be held uh, in uh, right at the University of Genova, in, uh, that will be probably held in uh, spring 2019. So with this announcement, I would like to thank you for your attention. Thank you for listening to me. <laughs> Grazie mille. Grazie. Prego. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sara, for sharing the work with us of the European Students Association for Cultural Heritage. Uh, it's been really interesting, and I would like to see if the audience has any questions for you. Yes, the audience has some questions, Sara. The first one is... Sarah, how do you personally relate to the term European identity? Wow, big question. Yeah, yes, that's a, that's a big question. I, I identify myself with this notion with the, the, when there's no prejudice, basically. When, where there's, there's no prejudice, I mean, we have a, a so, Diverse, diversifying culture in Europe. There's sometimes I, I'm I'm very sorry because because I didn't understand the some some of some of the speech some of the speech about the the Balkanic culture if I don't if I remember well and yes there's some for myself there are also some zone of Europe that I really don't know there are like some obscure zone that I don't know so the the notion of Europe of European identity is like not to not to mix, not to con to to lose my culture in a, in in a kind of um, homogeneous culture, but yes, to to know what what is the culture of you, what is the diversification of the culture of Europe, and to like illuminate some zone of Europe, some culture that for me are are, are really are really sti still, still far for me. Thank you. We have some more questions. Okay. Yeah. One is uh, asking you, how do you think institutions can reach out and communicate better with young people interested of heritage? I think that they should, they're they should start to do like uh, um, an educational program and to think that um, we can we can really give an a, dif a different perspective and with all those program of internship that it's like three min three month internship not well paid and we can also keep on doing the um, internship and gain experience in a lot of institution but in at some point I think that they really should pass pass something to pass something to us yeah thank you very interesting and we have one final question okay. uh, it's about the future as well and it says 
Uh, first of all, thank you, Sarah, for a very inspirational speech. And the question is, what would you, what, what would be your own personal vision for ESAC ten years from now? I would like it really to be, uh, as as I said, um, an occasion to to meet to meet other stu other students and 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 as i said that i would like it to be open our me our meeting to uh, not our network because our network maybe will still be um, involved just stu the students but when it comes to to meet to to meet i really would like i really see like those meeting like uh, a conference where a lot of a lot of people could come, a lot of people could know some could know project of of the different of the different students of the European University because there were some some very interesting presentation about the heritage of this city that it was that, that you, we really don't know. For example, the as as I, as I said the. Um, the girl from Bucharest that was studying uh, it Italian culture was a surprise for me. Or the hidden, the um, or the hidden culture, the hidden monuments in uh, in Monsta. And I will also see Isaac having a, a, hu a huge network, also including some like East East uh, uni East University. We now have Poland, and we have this kind of of connection with a very different culture. And yes, basically, I see Isaac in ten years with a, as a huge network where we can share our researches and we can really keep on connected to different academic fields. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. It's been an honor having you here. Thank <laughs> you for the inspiration and keep up the good work. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.